episode a really informative episode for you uh, you watch parks and recs i've seen a few of them episodes fuck what was his name um on the radio that shit hell old but purred happily what's happening with purred this is a leftist marxist leninist podcast we were going to define sponsored, <laughs> sponsored with, by the dsa with the red roses and bernard sanders and a political revolution black lives matter coexist refugees welcome Hell Black episode 71. We back on that bullshit. Yeah, man, we here. Fucking with it. Rocking. Quarantine, you know. Fuck Corona, nigga. Fuck the USA, nigga. Fuck Trump, nigga. Fuck all them crackers who was protesting with guns and shit, saying we need to go back to our jobs and shit, and saying fucking quarantine is communism. Fuck all you. Social distancing is communism. Bro, what? Yes, sir. That's how you know these white people really just, they don't know fucking shit, bro. I mean, like, we, we were talking about it earlier. Like, I wish. You got Trump over here saying liberate Virginia, liberate Michigan. <laughs> Nigga, what? Out of all the things that get folks to go up in arms, it's not being able to go back to work and be exploited. They took our jobs. <laughs> what kind of cognitive dissonance does one has to have to have, want to possess to go up in arms Storm the state capitol and demand that they be required that they that they be allowed to go back to work. They're trying to fire their governors, fire their politicians because they're Republican politicians. Even at that, they're trying to keep them quote unquote safe from COVID nineteen. And Bro. these mu- these fuckers is literally capitalism protesting. has done a number on folks' psyche. That's just really how you know how this like <laughs> colonial propaganda is so psyches, fucking folk. strong. And this buy into whiteness because that's what it really is. This is buy into whiteness. Out of all the things you could demand, you want to demand your right to go back to work and be exploited. And to get sick. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just rereading George Jackson and it's really just talking about these working. A lot of them, you know, are actually like working class white people, but they're indoctrinated into this fucking colonial fucking propaganda. This fucking pig fascist fighting propaganda. for your right to live check to check. Not le- not let me fight and go back with for better for better working service, <laughs> with better working conditions, health care, higher higher wages. Let me go back to my old life. And Let a lot me. of this white working class people are far right. So niggas always talk about the working class and always like, oh, the white working class. Like one conversation niggas ain't having about the working class is nigga. A lot of this white working class is some far right imperialist fucking pigs, bro. Period. And we seeing this shit happen right now. The motherfuckers up and up with their guns and shit white trying malicious. to go back to work. <laughs> so when we say you feel me, niggas got to have self-defense, nigga. Nigga have to have protection, nigga. This is the shit. Like these motherfuckers will go up in arms for this shit. I just, Imagine you feel me, and niggas are actually doing some of that, you know, revolutionary shit, nigga. The fuck you think gonna happen, nigga? You ain't seen no police talk. Do. Exactly. What they always do whenever black folks start taking they they uh, lives into their own hands, and not even in the sense of like black folks start responding in violence. I mean, when black folks just try to make, make something for themselves, right? <laughs> we we talk about Tulsa We talk about Black Wall Street like, I'm not talking about when black folks arm themselves I'm talking about when black folks just go out and try to live their life And adopt into a system Pick up their bootstraps, you feel me? Even when black folks is practicing capitalism, nigga They bomb us nigga. They cause harm <laughs> So, you know I mean, white white folks show you When they want something done, what do they do? Pick Get up their a AR-15s <laughs> when, they want, their when they want something done When they're trying to get a point across Pick up, their, pick guns. up their guns Get ready, brother. Don't tread on me. They exercise their, their rights. Their Second Amendment right. Afforded to them by the United States Constitution. Come on. And what's wild, though, is Trump is really just playing to that game. Because, you know, Trump ain't as foolish as he comes off or as people try to make him say. Like, I think people think that he ain't, you know, I mean, he ain't intelligent. But, you know, he's smarter than what people try to say he is. Like, he's saying, oh, liberate Virginia. It's on the governors and shit. He's just trying to keep his base empowered in this election so this is just colonial propaganda again coming from trump even though i, I do think trump really thinks like niggas should actually be in the house i mean he just but said he three, just, three weeks ago he was telling folks to stay in the house just that was just what well, his message was stay safe stay home that was the, that was the message virginia from everyone right now that liberate and what does liberate mean go back to being a slave that's what take up arms against that's your what governor. liberation means for folks it's 
So I he's know, really, man. he's imagine really if just, they were. Imagine if we had them folks on our team. Shit, man. I wish they was that. I wish they was ready to die about some real shit. <laughs> go back to work. Go back to work. <laughs> keep keep being a, a white exploited working class. I've never seen someone want to fight in the need of their own oppression so badly. Fight yeah. for the fight in alignment with their own expectation. I've never. I've, and they out there with their Make America Great Again shit on. So it's really just Trump trying to activate his base. At right least now. folks know what make America what, what makes America great. In right? election year, <laughs> it's showing the fascist regime literally in full effect and seeing its fascist supporters outside in full effect. So, yeah, but you know, a little sidetrack from the episode that we're gonna talk about. <laughs> but we I mean, to, it's I not because it's not shit. a sidetrack. Everything about the, everything like Hello Black is a critique of the white supremacist, yeah, capitalist, patriarchal nation that it's is. It's all America, interconnected the in some way. of America. It's all, we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about patriarchy and white supremacy, just from the perspective of a fat sex worker. So this shit is going to work. Perfectly. Smooth transition. It's going to work <laughs> perfectly. I'm I'm hella excited about this episode. Like, yeah. So what are we going to talk about, man? You already hinted at it. I mean, so yeah, we're going to talk about um, anti fatness um, and horophobia and their direct connections to white supremacy and patriarchy. And I'm excited to have uh, Raven, who is a fat sex worker from Chicago. Come on here and drop some knowledge from niggas, cause Ooh. I mean we just been. What I've been thinking about a lot lately is is theory and practice. That's a word. That's those, those are two words that have come up for me a lot in the past two weeks. And I'm thinking about how so many people are on here. And it also was birthed from a, from a conversation we had with Ty, when Ty was saying that when we were talking about um, Marxism, socialism, communism, we we're talking about all this shit, right? And he was saying that people like to make the argument for density as like if density makes it um, any less valuable, like something is too dense, right? Like too hard of a read and then i'm also thinking about theory and, and and practice and so i think oftentimes people talk about a society a socialist society a communist society a society where anti-blackness or white supremacy um capitalism and patriarchy no longer exists but it's like nigga what are you doing to understand these experiences of white supremacy of patriarchy of capitalism um, from other perspectives than yours right and that's why i'm like when we a hella black what we try to do is bring on folks that are um, falling victim to this state that don't Surviving identify the state in a different me? way that we, in which we are and that, the, the way we don't see it. You feel me? So I think that's, you know, even we're facilitating these conversations, but niggas is still learning in real time too. You feel me? So I think that's one shit we try to show with Hell with Black is nigga, we learning in real time too and we having these conversations that exactly. can be had anywhere else. And you know why it's important? Because how can you talk about this uh, a state a, a world where white supremacy capitalism and patriarchy no longer exists and you don't even know what the other identities right you don't know what fat sex work fat sex work fat sex workers need from a society like that right exactly. so it's important why as we talk about revolution and all this shit we got to start like what are you doing on your day-to-day basis to understand what folks that don't identify as the same thing that you as you identify need in that society yeah i mean because <laughs> if we don't liberate our minds from these colonial propaganda you feel me and we have a revolution we is just going to recreate some of those fucking colonial propaganda after if our minds aren't changed you feel me if we aren't constantly re-educating ourselves from this system and oftentimes when we talk about anti-blackness we think about police brutality we think about racism you feel me but we don't think about anti-fatness we don't think about horophobia. But what words you do people me? always like to use? Solidarity. Nigga, how are you practicing solidarity in your day-to-day life with these people? How are you engaging with disabled folks? How are you disa- How are you engaging with fat folks? How are you engaging with sex workers? How are you engaging with black women? How are you doing that now, nigga? But you plan on just doing this shit jump after into a fucking shit? revolution when you're supposed no, to just nigga, change? Like, cause no, because you ain't even built the habit to love and support them yet, nigga. <laughs> that shit ain't about to just turn so on. So just because we went to war with this fucking fascist <laughs> empire means you're going to be all right, nigga? You what? feel me? So that's why it's important that, nigga, we start having these conversations right now so that we can build a very, you feel me, liberated world for all black people. Whew. So Anti-fatness We did a great episode With Deshaun Episode 46 For niggas who don't remember Yeah Go tap, tap back in, in with that You feel me That, that, that is a knowledge. Pre-reading Or a pre-audio <laughs> syllabus You feel me To fuck with Tap in with that Curriculum <laughs> for niggas man. You know what I'm saying Former teacher Current teacher Of this motherfucker Rocket You know So anti-fatness Essentially is the hatred Of fat people Right And then we think about The intersection of blackness Right You know We think about How black people Is killed by the police Often right Oftentimes It's black fat people being killed. Eric Garner was killed by the police and they said he didn't die from being choked to death by the New York Police Department, New York Pig Department. Mm-hmm. But it was because he was obese, right? Or because he had asthma or something like that, right? So seeing that intersection of 
you know, blackness and anti-fatness, yeah. right? And we think about diet culture, which especially is coming up right now. Like, okay, you know, the Corona weight, you know, like people saying that, like, oh, don't eat too much. Don't snack too much. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's a lot of hatred towards fat people, right? And gaining weight in this time. Like, what are you talking about? You feel me? So just yeah. really understanding like how anti-fatness operates, right? In this world is super important. If we're going to talk about being free and a lot of this shit is, you know, as Deshaun said it in the episode, it's colonial, right? This colonial thought that we are saying throughout our fucking mouths. Niggas don't nigga. be understanding just how deep colonialism runs, bro, in our everyday lives and the way that we view the world. They don't like, understand nigga, do it, bro. Created body standards, nigga. White folks, the BMI metric. White <laughs> folks, nigga, that <laughs> created by a white person for white people. That calls us obese because we don't fit the white, you feel me, aesthetic, right? The white, the you know, especially like a lot of shit is built off of like white women's bodies, bro. Come on, come on. So if we're gonna talk about anti-blackness, we can't talk about anti-blackness without talk about anti-fatness, my nigga. When we talk about systems of oppression, nigga, anti-fatness is one of that systems of oppression. Yeah, come you on. Know? And that shit goes all the way back to slavery, right? If we're thinking about like the the caricature of the mammy, right? The mammy was often seen as a desexualized character caricature, right? But was oftentimes victims victims of sexual assault. On the plantation, but because she was con- considered as fat, right, desexualized, we don't often hear about those narratives. You feel me? Uh, of the mammy character, right, being sexually assaulted. You know. Yeah. So just thinking about this shit, this shit has grown, and this shit started in slavery, bro. It started in the of colonization. You feel me? It's the colonial product, and we still living in this colonial product today. And as soon as we can better start to see the connections between that shit, between the two. Is, is as soon as we can start moving towards a, a actual inclusive and liberated world, my nigga. Facts. Come on. Because we got a lot of fat black folks running around this motherfucker falling victim to the state. Come on, y'all. So, yeah. If you Morphobia, need more, too. Yeah. We're going to talk about that as well. And we're just trying to give you some pre definition, you feel me, before we get our expert on, you feel me? We ain't by no means no experts, but yeah. niggas is trying. And, you know, who knows? Uh, Raven might get on this motherfucker and correct us. About yeah. our we could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when we talking about um, horophobia and its links to fucking white supremacy and patriarchy, you got like, we're looking at horophobia, right? Which is the oppression and justification of the de- uh, like the exploitation and dehumanizing of sex workers. My nigga, it's right there for you. Literally, you feel me? A lot of our listeners are in Oakland. You feel me? We know OPD, nigga, sex trafficking, right? Literally, OPD had the, one of the biggest sex trafficking cases going on, right? And they're the ones who are supposed to stop sex trafficking when the niggas in blue is the ones doing it. What Ain't the fuck? <laughs> that, that is the very foundation of this country, you feel me, of fucking slave owners, nigga, of slave patrollers sexually assaulting, you know, enslaved Africans, right? This is the very root and the very foundation. So we're going to dive even deeper into that, you feel me, as well. So Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, you know, I, this is going to be a very, I'm, I'm looking to learn a lot. I know it's going to be a very informative episode. So, yeah, y'all tune in. Shout out, Raven. Episode 71, Hell of Black. You feel me? Tap in with us. You feel me? Patreon. Patreon.com slash Hell Black Pod. Tap in with us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Give us a five-star review, please. Please, a five-star review. If you don't want to give us a five-star review, just that's fine. Just don't give us a review at all. We don't want it. But, yeah, tap in. Fuck with us on IG at Hell Black Pod. Twitter at Hell Black Pod. Shit, episode 71. Have a black, you feel me? We in here rocking, recording. Special guest for y'all. Special guest. You know, we've been coming with them guests lately too. We've just been rocking. I know some like, sometimes y'all might be tired of our voices and shit. So, you know, niggas is passing the mic, the virtual mic, and we in this motherfucker rocking. We got Raven on this thing, aka Mother Princess. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I'm virtually grabbing the mic. It's me, Raven. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing real good, you know, as good as anybody can be do during this time. How are y'all? We chilling. Chilling, maintaining, you know. Mobbing. Mobbing, drinking our water, you know, green juice and shit, rocking. We, you out of <laughs> Chicago, right? Yeah, I'm from Chicago, but I'm in central Illinois for college. So, you know, little bum fields out here. Yeah, we was out in Chicago maybe Around a year ago. Around this time ago. last year. Yeah. Yeah. We pulled up out there. We had a show at uh, University of Chicago. Uh, yeah, University of Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. It, it was dope. It was cold oh, as hell. 
It was cold as hell. No, yeah, it do it do be cold as fuck <laughs> and windy as shit. What is it like out there right now? Um, in Sh- in Champagne where I'm at or in Chicago? Where you at? Oh, uh, it it was windy today, but it was like you know slightly nice. It was like. I don't know. I'm real bad at temperatures, but it had to be at least 70. <laughs> you be putting your arm know, outside the was, window? <laughs> you be putting huh? your arm outside the door and be like, all right, that's the temperature. You be checking the temperature with your arm? <laughs> no, I judge the weather by how many niggas um, riding down the street catcalling at me. So it was nice today. It was oh. a decent amount. That's how you know it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, shit. Um, we we kind of introduced you on our little intro, but I don't think anyone can do you more justice than yourself. Uh, we told folks that we had Raven, who was a fast sex worker, coming on to drop some game. But I don't know if you know what else you wanna, how else you wanna be, um, you know, referred to. Sure. So you know, uh, I'm Raven. Like I said, I'm a sex worker, a uh, PhD student. Ooh. I'm a fat black woman. You know. Um, a cat mom, so you know, and a lesbian. So you know, I'm kind of a little hodgepodge of things, but you know, most importantly, I am a Sailor Moon fan. If there's anything I want people to know, it's that. Ooh, Sailor Moon. I'm not really. I didn't real. Is Sailor Moon anime? Definitely is, and if you haven't seen it, you're tweaking. I mean, I remember uh, from like being a kid. Sailor Moon. I thought about like, what is that rum called? <laughs> Isn't there a, a Rome called? Oh, Sailor Jerry. Sailor Jerry. That's what my mom was. <laughs> Sailor Moon was hard, Jerry, though. I was like, what? I thought it was called Sailor Moon. She had, like, that power that would come from her crown, right? Yeah, and she would get, like, Did she used to shoot niggas with that? And did, did, she, she what? did she used to shoot niggas with that? <laughs> like, what, like, what happened? What did no, she do she, with no, it? No, she used to uh, take her tiara and, like, fling it at niggas. Like, it would turn, <laughs> like, it's like a boomerang and motherfuckers would be destroyed. She know, did she know, did she know, like, did she know martial arts? Like, what was her thing? Well, I mean, not really. She, like, you know, it was a lot of light flashes. Like, she would say a catchphrase and motherfuckers evaporate in the light. They do, I, be, you know, do I like, need to watch really Sailor Moon? Do so, I need to watch Sailor Moon? I think so. I think that's because I'm tweaking right now. I ain't never watched it. Okay, I'm about to. Okay, I, I, wait. So, what's wait. your favorite catchphrase? Oh, shit. What's your favorite catchphrase? Catchphrase. Um, it's like after she done transforming, like, when she's like finna beat your ass, she says, In the name of the moon, I will punish you. And then she just, you know, oh, goes crazy. Shit. This is, <laughs> I'm going to have to sample that and just it? like randomly put that throughout the interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. That's funny as hell. <laughs> it was only on for five seasons, though. Yeah, it was it was uh like five seasons, but I think it was like two hundred some episodes. Damn, two hundred episodes in five seasons. Those are some season seasons. Yeah, shit. <laughs> We're like season season. Bruh. <laughs> so you said you getting your PhD? Yeah. So right now, you know, you got to complete your master's first. They accepted me as a PhD student, which is weird because it's like I don't have my master's yet. But um yeah, like I'm I'm a PhD student. What you studying? So I'm in educational policy with a with a concentration in um uh, social sciences. And then what I look at as far as like my research, I look at I'm currently looking at black sex workers and how like their proximity to deviancy um, this allows for them to like join academic and professional organizations geared towards black students. So, you know, thinking of like the Jack and Jill and the sororities and the fraternities, like they're for the advancement of black people. But there's a reason you don't hear about or really see sex workers like, you know, in that domain. What's your research on so far? Um, so far, I'm one like this defining you know deviancy trying to find a way to define it in the context of my research um so far though it's looking like you know there's the reason that uh, black sex workers are excluded from you know those type of organizations is on purpose because <laughs> from what i'm understanding is that the hmm, how do i phrase this uppity black folks think that if they play by white people rules that racism will not exist for them so they exclude and ignore everything that makes them black, even though they're obviously still black and obviously still experiencing racism. 
And um, yeah, so so you know, early stages, very early stages. But yeah, shit, that sounds like some important work. Thank you. You know, I'm hoping it'll grab everybody by the edges and get them to start acting right. Yeah, shit. You know, when you talk about D nine, though, it's <laughs> people. All, that's like a taboo thing for some reason. Talking about, especially like respectability politics within that, and you know, a lot of the talented tense shit that been pushed for yeah, shit, that generations. Yeah, like for sure, for sure. Motherfuckers definitely get in their feelings about it. Oh, you're not wrong in the least. Uh, and there's, you know, people in departments that, you know, I work with or a department that I'm in that are part of, you know, orgs like that. And, you know, they don't really, um, they have a lot to say about my work, and, you know. But, you know, I think that it's important for us to talk about these things that make us a little uncomfortable, you know, because if we don't, like, you know, shit gonna stay the same, you know? Yeah, I mean, good research should make you uncomfortable in some ways because it's exposing something that hasn't been talked about and that isn't normal and that isn't fucking standard in this <laughs> white supremacist you know society that we is living in you're right emphasis on good research though because it's a lot of people in academia academia is trash it don't mean nothing stats mean nothing uh all of that shit but it's people here that just you know reiterate the same thing that you know um du bois been talking about for years so <laughs> we're yeah. talking about so you know Facts. It's just on what you say. Good research makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah I'm in the academy too. I teach at uh, Cal. So okay, I'm already, okay. I'm already knowing. I'm already knowing all that shit. Niggas just be repeating this shit and calling it new research. Like, bruh, you saying the same shit over and over. You just, you just used a different big word to say it, bruh. That ain't research. <laughs> That's called copy and paste and looking to, to do a th uh, thesaurus. I was about to say shit. Especially <laughs> white folks. They get away with doing that shit routinely. <laughs> Shit, so I don't know if you've listened to uh, Hell of Black before, but one of the first things we try to do with Hell of Black is start it off with some joy. You know, ain't that white joy, but that black joy, you feel me? So, you know, I know joy is kind of hard right now or can be hard, especially in the times that we're living in. But, you know, do you have any black joy moments that you, you want to share with, with our audience? Oh, black joy, black joy. Um... Man, this probably gonna be weird as fuck, but like something when you said joy, the first thing that popped up in my mind is how in high school niggas used to say if you eat almond joys, you eat ass. <laughs> and like that was what? such a I've never heard that. <laughs> went... I've never heard that. <laughs> that must be a real Chicago thing <laughs> right there. I'm like, <laughs> Wait, what? I don't even know if it was a Chicago thing. You could just been a nigga that my school feel weird, but that's like you eat almond joys, you eat ass. And that's such a black ass memory because i don't feel like that was said in non-black spaces so like when you said that i immediately got like a flash of happiness remembering like that wild shit because <laughs> the black joy triggered almond joy which triggered niggas eat ass <laughs> <laughs> and guess what i eat almond joy so they damn near weren't wrong <laughs> now oh my that god I'm your so mind lovely, they were not wrong have you seen that little meme like if you type if you go to twitter right now you search like a like a ah oh fuck is it a gif or a gif who I knows know. nigga say what? <laughs> if you search whatever that is um and you put like confusion what i'm seeing right now is that 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 gif with the nigga like where it's like fucking triangles and numbers and hella formulas going across his head i'm trying to figure out yeah i know what you're talking about i'm trying to figure out how white black bro. joy got you to think about almond joy <laughs> like think about eating black ass joy. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe maybe it's a coconut. Because, you know, bitches be, like, rubbing coconut oil all in their booty cheeks and stuff. Maybe, like, it's, it's that. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> that That is a good... <laughs> <laughs> that is a good theory. Yes, We're we going to have to research that more. That was fun. <laughs> that possible. was hilarious. Like, that's, like... <laughs> that whole sequence is very funny to me. That was, you're, you're very funny. I don't know. You see a nigga eating an almond, Joy. <laughs> That nigga eat ass. Wild. Almond joys are actually my disgusting. Grandma ass isn't. My late grandma used to eat them hoes religiously, so <laughs> she didn't tell me nothing. <laughs> uh, this, this is a great way to start this episode. <laughs> a great way to start the episode. So, so let's see, what about you? You got Black Joy? You's about to go into the episode without talking about your own Black Joy. Nah, man, I'm always... Uh, <laughs> let me see. You. Let me see... I, you know what I'm making a commitment to right here on, on episode 71? 
for every episode, I'm gonna start writing my Black Joy out before. So I don't gotta sit here and ponder and waste our listeners' times with me fucking <laughs> acting like I'm at the McDonald's menu. Can I get a motherfucking uh, uh, Sprite <laughs> and uh, two McChicken? You heard it here first, uh, y'all. Declaration: I will be ready for every every episode of Hella Black moving forward. Episode seventy one. You will never hear me stutter over my Black Joy ever again. Yeah, um, I, I can't. It do sounds this. like what I'm you're about talking about shit. is journaling. <laughs> 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 I don't want to break it, but it just sounds like you're saying you've been a journal. No, so you know how we sent you an outline. Like, yeah. I'll, have a, I'll have a separate outline, and I'll 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 note my black joy. So when Blake asks me what's my black joy moment, <laughs> I can open the doc up, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna be triggered by whatever buzzword I use, and I'm gonna tell my story. <laughs> but for my black joy, uh, I went to my granny house this past week, and we got her some cable and Wi-Fi. I know that might, that's a big deal for me just because, you know, being able to do something nice for my grandma. Because niggas need cable and Wi Fi, period, plain blank. Shit, especially now. Niggas are so far removed from like not even basic cable, but like when you don't have cable at all and all you get is seven channels and three of them are staticky. That's what I had my grandma do. And that's some bullshit. So I went and got, I went over there recently. I was like, what the fuck? Like, this what you be watching? Damn near Telemundo? No, nah, we ain't going out like this. I'm about to get my Next nigga. Next time she talks to you, she's she gonna know all the stuff on love and hip hop. I'm finna, I'm finna get my granny every channel they fucking got. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get her some damn Wi Fi. So that was my Black Joy moment. What about you? Oh, super shit. nice. I got my Harley waxed and washed. That shit was dirty. I got that shit cleaned. Yes, <laughs> that shit made me hella happy. <laughs> I don't know. I really love bikes and motorcycles and shit. So getting that shit washed, wax, it should look like it was brand new right out the showroom. So shout out to Hard to Top Detail, man. Get me right, man. That shit was cool. And I went on a ride. Niggas been on the house in the house for a minute with fucking asthma and shit. But going on a ride, getting some some wind therapy is what I like to call it. That shit was nice to just get out the house and experience some joy through that. That's man. Not real relaxing. Hey, I'm happy for you, man. Hundred miles per hour, man. That shit feel like freedom. I swear to God. <laughs> I've always wanted to join a lesbian biker gang. Shoot. Now's the time. You know how to ride a motorcycle? Not at all. I want to be a, what do they call it, a backpack? I want to be a backpack. A fine bitch backpack. That's all I want. <laughs> My nigga said I wanted to join a lesbian biker club just so I can ride on motherfuckers' back. <laughs> just so I can get on the back. Literally. <laughs> they going to throw your ass in that little side cart. <laughs> that's what happened in that movie that movie biker boys i just seen that movie that shit was wild <laughs> shit well we're gonna check up with you in like a year and see if that that dream dream has came true <laughs> so this quarantine over that gotta man, be the first thing on the list so, we're gonna uh, hold you accountable to it so please do <laughs> Y'all ready to get the rock and we can dive into this to this to this game, this game related shit. You can lace our boots one time, Raven. We trying to pick oh my ourselves. Goodness. Pick <laughs> ourselves up with the bootstraps with this this radical, this radical theory and this radical action. So oh my gosh. Uh, you know, first we wanted to ask, you know, we know that um black fat people and sex workers are some of the most marginalized and oppressed identities in this white supremacist patriarchal state known as the United States of America. Um, and as someone that identifies as both, can you talk about your experience as a result of these intersecting identities? Yeah, so, who that's a lot to unpack here, as they say. So, you know, being, like, fat and Black and, you know, a sex worker, I'm in a, in a field where people, you know, hire me for various services, but, you know, they mostly, um, it's based off of, like, desirability. You know, and so I understand that as a black person, I'm already considered like undesirable. And then as a fat black person, I'm considered undesirable. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll be quite frank, you know, it's, it mirrors what it is in like, you know, the non-sex worker <laughs> world, the civvy world. And so it's a lot of, you know, uh, derogatory terms. You got to get in where you fit in, you know, like the only times it seems that like I'm brought up or respected is if, you know, motherfuckers feeling a little like Desi and they want to do a fat, you know, black sex worker thread, <laughs> you know, it'd be the same like 10, 20 bitches and shit like that. Cause we're kind of, you know, it's not really too many of us um, or a lot of us are just in hiding. 
But you know, uh, while I don't get the, what's the word I want to use? I don't get the, I guess, the non-fat experience with sex work, where it's just a cute petite girl going out with a, you know, older man. I get the, you know, you're just so, so big. Can you dominate me? Can you make me feel like a weak, puny little white man? It's very, like, fetishy, even more so because it's the fatness and the blackness, like, working together. Yeah, we we, we talked about kind of that... Um that demonizing of black of 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 fat uh black folks as a direct direct result of kind of like you know the mammy caricature like that whole thing for of like, sure yeah. and it's oftentimes it's like being desexualized but that's not the case at all right like oftentimes like the popular narrative is being desexualized but you're also sexualized in a lot of ways too right is that what you're saying yes very sexualized like you know growing up especially just you know, existing in, like, my fat body, things that I would wear would just be more, like, inherently provocative because <laughs> it was on my body. You know, I had, like, titties and ass and, you know, stuff like that. But I'll be very, very upfront. Like, while I am fat, I'm on the smaller scale of fatness. I actually uh, recently, within the last six months, got some cosmetic procedures done. Um, I got liposuction and a Brazilian butt lift. So now my fatness is not only smaller, but it's more, um, it's considered desirable because it's proportionately in the right places. And so I will say comparing before I got the CBL to now, like now I have solid proof <laughs> that niggas just don't like fat bitches and it's just mean to them straight up. Because now that I'm shaped like a Coke bottle, people are nicer to me. Like I'm still fat. So, you know, it's always somebody going to think something because I'm big, but people are nicer to me. People um, just treat me generally with more respect. I've always been a very, very feminine girl, like acrylic nail, lashes that um, when I blink, they like touch my eyebrows and get, you know, get a little uncomfortable with pink is my favorite color, like all of that. But I was never seen as feminine before I, you know, got my body proportioned in a certain way. But now, like, people just see me as a such feminine, light, sweet girl. And I'm like, wow. Y'all niggas the wildest because I've always been that way. I was just shaped like a refrigerator. And when you talk about, I guess, like the the distance between fatness and femininity, 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 <laughs> femininity. Say femininity three times. <laughs> femininity, Jesus. Uh, we gotta start doing tongue twisters before we start. This is what I get for calling you dyslexic last week. God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> But when you see the distance between the two, right, this lets you know that with that experience, if 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 people equate fatness with not with not being feminine, you can imagine what the experience of a non of a fat black woman is like. Right, because a lot of your experiences is being not being erased. seen as a woman, yeah. like not being seen as a woman. No, yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen people start to to use this term um, with lots of you know things, but it's weird to me when they talk about fat black women that way because they'll say. Fat black women like weaponize their femininity. Femininity. There we go. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. I need a one person. Hard ass word. <laughs> but they be like, you know, so and so is weaponizing their femininity, and I'm looking. I see it's the fat black bitch. I'm like, hey, <laughs> like I what? was pretty weaponizing her femininity. Femininity. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just and give it up. Let's like, skip that one. <laughs> skip how is she weaponizing her girliness? <laughs> if motherfuckers don't even see her like as a girl or a woman. Like, how, how is that happening? Can you explain that to me? You know, people get mad and start using verbiage. They don't even know the meaning of, so, you know. Bruh, niggas just be using big-ass words and words they just fucking learned that they don't even really know what they mean just to demonize black women, especially black fat Ain't it wild how someone can, can give and take an identity when they when they see Yeah, like, like, niggas be like, oh, I don't believe in feminine. identity politics. Now you're not. But now, like, hey, you're weaponizing your identity, and you're engaging in some like, like, identity politics. So it's like, nigga, what? Pick a side, You got to pick one. Like, is it not real or is it very real? Which is it? Because it sounds like it's real and y'all just want to use it to your own fucking way. You know what I mean? Like, no, y- yeah, y'all just every, making shit up. Every time. You know, it kills me, you know, when the when the skinnies get to life. Skinny shaming is, like, so real and da 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 Like, skinny tears taste delicious to me. Because it's just always, you know <laughs> for a fact, you know for a fact, that skinny shaming is not at the level of fat shaming because exactly. you yourself fear being fat. Like that's a legitimate fear within your heart. 
and you know it just goes over their heads and they cry yeah. more especially seen on twitter it was like this one trans like before you dm me know i'm looking like this and then you see a bunch of like Ooh. skinny skinny women like posting shit like bro this shit was not for you like, like what the bro fuck? what like, this shit was not for you doing? chill like <laughs> it's li- it's like you took this thing that was clearly about motherfuckers with st- like stomachs stretch marks all of that fat bitches this was clearly about fat bodies and you took it upon yourself to use it as a moment for somebody to like give you validation in a world that already gives you validation. Like you're sick, <laughs> you need help. Niggas be stealing from black fat folks. That's what it is, and it be black All people the doing the shit too. I mean, that's how privilege works, right? All you get to pick and choose what parts of people you want. You want to, you want to, you want to try on. Yeah. Like, what? So you want to like be hella anti-fat, but then use the trends of black fat people. Like what? Even in fat suits, like nigga, why not just hire a fat actor? Like, what? I've always wondered that. Like, like it's what? this movie, this old ass movie called Shallow Hell. Oh, probably yeah. the most problematic like about movie that with on here, no? Yeah, Shallow Hell is a is a is a mess. Is that Kate Hudson? I don't know. One of the white people. See, I'm, I think it's Jack. Is Jack Black in it? Yeah, Jack Black, and I think it's like the the woman who put on who put on the fat suit is Kate Hudson. I believe. I don't know. I think I thought it was her, but. It's the same a super movie. skinny bitch, that's for sure. <laughs> like, it's definitely not somebody sad. Like, yeah, movies like that, like, it's, it's like the same thing with, you know, people with darker skin tones or people of, like, very specific ethnicities. Like, why not just get those people, like? <laughs> yeah. So just thinking about, like, respect for Black women, for Black fat women and shit, and then, you know, talking about, like, Black sex workers as well. So, like, what does respect for Black fat sex workers look like? You know, because I think if we think about respect for black fat, so black fat sex workers, that's going to lead to respect for everybody, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, respect is one of those things where I don't want to say what what one person, what respect looks like for one person, because it's just it's so different for everybody. But I think as a general like statement, like one, you know, decriminalize like fat sex worker bodies, like, of course. Um, protect them from harm, you know, respect looks like you loving us in public and in private, like, I'm tired of the whole, like, I like that bitch behind the scenes, but in public, you know, I need me somebody who's a little bit more, like, conventional, Um, like, I, I think respect just looks like openly defending us, a lot of people will defend us in private, like, I've had friends who somebody would say something really, like, fat phobic to me, and then, like, you know, when we're at home, they're like, I can't believe they said that to you, da 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 And it's like, bitch, you were standing right there. Why was I the only one opening my mouth? Like, I, I think respect was, like, you know, standing on the front lines with us. And if you were asking me personally what I think it is, I think it's standing on the front line in front of me because I'm tired of talking about this bad shit. And it's not for the skinny folks who know better to start telling their <laughs> fellow skinnies to get it together. You said fellow skinnies. You fellow skinnies, nigga. Y- y'all, need, y'all niggas need to link up and get it together. <laughs> Literally, y'all need to band together and just get it right. So, yeah, it's it's gonna cause for a lot of motherfuckers to start to start checking their um anti fatness. And I even think that Yeah, and I I I realize um that's something that shit it's been hard for me to do, my nigga. Like and of course I don't think my anti fatness always as, a, as of late, right, it didn't look like making fun of fat people or laughing at, like, laughing at fat people for clearly anti-fat jokes and shit, right? Um, but it looked like my association to diet culture, you feel me? It looked like my association to my own body, and as a result, how I perceive my own body is a direct re- relation to how I perceive fat bodies in general, right? So it was, like, starting to do my own fucking unpacking. Like, that's what niggas got to realize, because people like to think that, non-fat people not like to think that anti-fatness, anti-fatness doesn't, doesn't affect them. them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that's what niggas are starting to believe, and it's like, nah, first of all, I do, and you got to realize how that shit is directly connected to colonialism in the terms of if we're going to be talking about liberation for black folks. We got to liberate all, all black folks, and that includes fat black folks. Yeah, and I think the, like, you know, the introspective part, you know, you were mentioning, like, you know, um, thinking about, like, you know, fatness and diet culture, how that relates to you, whether you're fat or not, like, as somebody who did get plastic surgery, like, that's something that I've had to do even recently, you know, I've always done it being a smaller fat, trying to not take up space, like, 
I'm not going to say no names because I'm not shady, but we all know the bitches on Twitter and Instagram that are, quote, unquote, you know, like, fat influencers and stuff like that, but they're shaped like, you know, Coke bottles, and they all, like, you know, racially ambiguous. I would never want to be one of those, taking up space in the fat liberation movement. <laughs> so, like, checking myself more and more as I, like, go down this, like, you know, cosmetic surgery road, as I plan to get even more because it's so fun, and then asking myself, like, hey, Raven, like, why are you so invested in having this body, you know, getting permanent, like, procedures to, like, make yourself look this way? And I, I don't want to, you know, come down on people or take away their um, autonomy, like, in them making decisions for themselves when they, like, partake in certain parts of diet culture or, you know, plastic surgery culture, culture to get, like, you know, body modification. I, I just think it's really important that we talk about why you're doing it, what you're going to gain out of it. And if this is something that you, like, you know, would feel comfortable, like, ever doing again. Because chances are, if you're not comfortable doing it twice, you're probably not comfortable, like, doing it the first time. And then also asking, like, I think I said this already, but who are you doing it for? That's, like, a super big one. Yeah. I mean, for me, it came down to, man, I've always wanted a bigger booty, (laughs) honestly. And then, you know, I know it would help me with, like, my sales. I know it would help me, like, with my sex work and stuff like that. And it has. It definitely has. And so, you know, it's just making sure that things like that, like, are just, you're always being critical of it. If yeah. you're not being critical of it, like, don't do it at all. Yeah, I just feel like so many times people want to not mention the why. It's like, dog, you gonna, you have the right to do what you're going to do, but we have to address the why. Because for one, the why might change your mind. <laughs> we gotta, it, it might change your mind. And for two, you don't want to, you, you can't be in denial. Yeah. Because that denial doesn't just look like you only getting your, it doesn't look like your anti-fatness only affecting you. It looks like your it looks like the way that you interact with, with fat people in general. So let's yeah. not deny the why. Yeah, and I, for I, sure. I, and I think I think the why can bring out like um, issues of the system or you know the the phobia that you're trying to bring out too. Like it took me a minute to be able to say to myself, "I got this surgery because I'm tired of whenever somebody's like cool with me, I'm a big beautiful woman, but whenever somebody's mad at me, I'm a slappy shape, a sloppy shaped fat bitch." Like, I had to admit to myself that I was so tired of that. And then I was like, damn, what does that say about our society that yeah. I got surgery because I'm, I was tired of people, like, making fun of my body type? Yeah. I mean, it's just so deeply rooted in the society. And, like, I feel like these conversations, like, I feel like I first got hit when, like, Deshaun started talking about this, you know? So even for me, like, I feel like, oh, I read a lot or I'm trying to learn a lot, but like, I'm, this is just a conversation that I'm starting to have within this past year, yep. you know, and especially relating it, you know, to white supremacy, to colonization, to these systems, you know, that we profess to hate, but then oftentimes we'll engage in like anti-fat jokes and shit like that. But I think that the introspective part, you know, that's, 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 that's the hardest part, you know, at least like, I feel like for myself, when I started learning about it, I'm like, okay, shit, like, why did I, you know, why am I obsessed with working out? <laughs> why do I need to work out? You, should, you know, or like just even shit in my childhood and shit, you know, I was always like bigger, I guess you could say. And just like, Oh, you know, why was I made to work out shit like that? And how do I associate working out in a way that's actually healthy for me? You know? So I think that introspective part is, is super important. So I think one thing to just transition a little bit is like, how can people start to unpack their fat phobia, you know? And I think a lot of it is being introspective in some ways, but yeah, just how, how can folks begin to, unpack their fat phobia for both people that are fat and aren't fat? I think the first thing that comes to mind is understanding that your fat phobia is not a preference. Um, I think a lot of people are in this stage of like, you know, I, or they take the word phobia a little bit too seriously. They're like, I'm not afraid of fat people. I don't fear anything. Like, all right, nigga, shut up. I think people need to like understand that you thinking that I'm ugly and less deserving of certain healthcare rights, less deserving of respect, and less deserving of even getting fucking clothing options is not a fucking preference. That is, like, systematic as fuck. And then, like, I think as far as, like, unpacking it even further, asking yourself where you got these ideas from, you know, and then looking at yourself in the mirror, because I feel like we all have fat people in our life that we love because we know them personally. Looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, wow, like, the things that I think about fat people also extend to the fat people in my life that I love, and that's fucking trash, because they don't deserve that. 
Yeah, it's facts. Yeah, I really, I really resonated with the like, look who you got your ideas from. <laughs> like, like, look who you, look who helped shape your your view on fatness. And when you see who the, it's, it's the same, like B, you made the point earlier, you're getting this information from the same people that are in charge of the system that you claim to hate. But you're engaging with it yourself. <laughs> exactly. I think another big piece is asking yourself, like, what is fat? What is health? Who is determining what's fat? Who's determining what's healthy? Who's determining what behaviors are, yeah. you know, this way? And a lot of it goes back to the, the medical field. And if we can have these conversations about how the medical system is, like, you know, very, very anti-Black, we need to be at a place where we have the conversations about how the medical system is very anti, you know, anti-fat and how it's, you know, perpetuating all these horrible things. Like, I think something Sid has said that is, like, super, super resonated with me, got into an argument on Facebook with family members about it, is that obesity and obese is a slur like that that's a fucking slur just because somebody put it in some little you know med school book don't make it like not a slur right and it's like these races been put in hella racist ass shit in medical school books so why don't you think they're putting anti-fat shit in medical school books or they anti books? everything else nigga. like <laughs> what do we they have what uh drapetomia drapetomia was a, a psychological disease that they came up with for uh, enslaved Africans who was running off of the plantation, like they literally said that it was an academic term, you that, know. So it's like that, that was a disease. That was a disease. Running so for like your freedom. Looking at the foundation, and I think this is important, especially you know you being in the academy and shit. Is like the academy is a site of colonial indoctrination and colonial this propaganda. Is, this is what produces you know I mean? all this. This is shit. what produces this type of thought that is later being used on Twitter or being used on television shows and shit like that. So a lot of this shit is, is rooted in the academy and i like how you was talking about just health too you know like people even for myself like i probably gained 40 pounds since i stopped playing sports in college but like my health is better than it was when i was in college but people might not think that because i gained weight but literally my body feels better i'm not waking up with pain every single day you know what i mean like my mental health is stronger and health is such a, a fully encompassing word too you feel me it ain't just the physical but in America, in a, in, a, in a country that hates fat people, we, we directly connect weight to size. I mean, health to size. That's what we determine is healthy or unhealthy. Not your fucking organs, your nervous system, how Bruh. much weight you have. My little brother is skinny oh. as fuck. Like, growing up, the nigga was so skinny, bro. And that motherfucker was so unhealthy with what the nigga ate. Like, just eating hella candy and shit. Like, it was nothing, bro. Like, I love my little brother and shit. Don't get me wrong, but that nigga was just eating hella candy. That was not healthy. So I was I was on Reddit. So, you know, I, this story is already starting off on me doing something dumb. I was on Reddit and I was in the um, sugar baby part of Reddit. And they do these things where they rate your profiles on like, you know, sugar baby website. And at the time I was um, vegan slash, you know, plant based. And somebody, I kid you not, you know, I'm just putting it up there, like, rate my profile, you know, give me tips, like, what what, would you, what do you think is good? And this guy was, like, he gave me this whole, like, five-page paper on why it doesn't make sense for me to put that I'm plant-based in my seeking arrangements profile because I'm fat, and then proceeded to zoom in on the pictures of me and say that, you know, he's like, your BMA, BMI looks to be about this, and gave me, like, this, all these sightings about why it's, like, okay for people to hate me because I'm fat and I'm biologically inferior because I'm black as well. And I was like, damn, Reddit cop, dude, I was on Reddit for like five hours. Like I just made the account. I was like, this shit kind of wild. Like, I heard Reddit is wild in general. Like I ain't never really been on it. Yeah. Yeah, Reddit is um something else, but and I, I'm not saying that I like it or endorse it. Like people on yeah. Reddit are fucking sick, but like being on Reddit and engaging in like you know sex worker like Reddit and stuff like that has made it made me see even more clearly the way that black sex workers are treated and demeaned and stuff like that. Because people who like I feel like Twitter people like are fake like progressives. Like yeah. you know they want to yeah. act like they don't have these horrible Reddit ideologies that they need to unpack and work through. Yeah, Reddit, they're real fucking honest. <laughs> like, you can't hide from that. There's no face, really, on the profile. So it's, like, you know, more anonymous-like, almost like that 4chan shit. Yeah. But, you know, definitely. Yeah, I heard Reddit is, like, and 4chan is, like, those two stomping grounds for, like, white supremacists. 
No, yeah, I've never, I've never been given statistics on why I'm like my body and my race are biologically inferior. That was really new to me. I was like, damn. True. You know, you know what? You know what I've noticed when it comes to like allyship and solidarity for 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 black sex workers and sex workers in general. Like a lot of motherfuckers is not going past the performative. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why you still got so many black sex workers out here starving in fucking poverty. This is the reason why you still got so many black sex workers being assaulted and shit. It's because niggas not really taking the time to see what it need, what what solidarity looks like, what it looks like to be in solidarity with black sex workers. Like niggas is just online taking all y'all fucking theory and preaching everything that y'all tell us and on the back end doing nothing to really improve y'all day-to-day living conditions. Not even going as far to really engage with y'all on a day-to-day basis. Past as much as what they can get from you. No, very much so. I mean, you know, it's all fun and games when it's a thread, you know, talking about who you're sexually attracted to. But when it comes time to, like, you know, give me your fucking money, like, niggas is gone, like, completely. When it comes time or, you know, just looking at who gets booked and who doesn't get booked, like, it's very, very clear who's getting the money and who's not getting the money. And black sex workers, you know, it's it's a whole different ball game. Like, it's just very, very hard. And it gets more hard and more dangerous, like, you know, the more deviant you are from everything else. Oh, if you're trans, if you're a fat, um, I mean, even little things as being like a bald black bitch into sex work, like that can even like, you know, like cause you some danger. Yeah, I know one thing we were talking about earlier on the introduction of this episode was this concept of like horror phobia. So you think you can define that for us too? Sure. So for me, horror phobia is the hatred and discrimination um, systematically, legally, and personally of sex workers or those like who engage within like the sex worker field. But I also think that it can extend to people who are not in the sex worker field, such as a girl who's, you know, wearing a crop top and somebody, you know, slut shames her for that. Like that's a, that's a horophobic type of thing to do. But I feel like the root of it comes from like the hatred of like, like sex, sex workers. workers and in, in my opinion i would argue the hatred of black sex workers i mean because what is sex work in all in all of its forms right it's like women taking control of their bodies women taking control women taking control of their financial status <laughs> and we know in a patriarchal that in a patriarchal society that is not what niggas want that goes directly against the status quo <laughs> directly against it yeah you're not you're not performing you're not performing capitalism correctly when you start charging for your time and your body Shit, according to and according to patriarchy, you're not performing womanhood correctly either. Shit. Yeah, you're definitely not because you shouldn't be making money at all. Like you're, you know, whoever your man owner is should be yeah. making all the money. Especially not off your body. Yeah. <laughs> and when a man isn't making no money off that's of it, a whole nother layer. Like especially, I feel like right now, you know, as a lot of things, you know, I feel like it's transitioning to to online. We're seeing like a lot of increased hatred by men for sex workers who've, you know, moved more to like OnlyFans, right? Um, can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit more about this and like, you know, what you think this hatred is rooted in? Uh, I think this hatred is rooted in like, in part, niggas are broke and they don't have access to pretty girls talk because about it. it's a paywall now. It's yeah, a paywall now. And I think, <laughs> and, it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's some rich men too, you know, they're definitely, they all men partake in this, you know, <laughs> to an extent, or they have. But, you know, I think a lot of it at the ground level, the first ones you see is always the brokest ones because, you know, they no longer have access to women, which, you know, I guess if you want to look at it like in capitalistic terms, like having pretty girls on you is like, you know, capital. So they, they don't have access to that because they can't afford it because there's a paywall now. Um, I also think there's just a general disgust <laughs> when people ever see women um financially becoming financially free or close to financial freedom or on that path i think people really really hate that and more than they're um, willing to admit even when they see you know women with high paying jobs even if it's a quote unquote respectable job people hate seeing women in high paying positions just being paid and having money it doesn't make them feel very good um and i think it makes men feel really really low about themselves i think it makes them feel like they're failing (laughs) <laughs> so they take that anger and that violence out on like women for sure and you know because of you know this only fans boom that honestly has has been happening for the past like six months i feel like before even like you know this pandemic took place but because of like this boom you're seeing more and more of it visibly 
So I think it's a reminder every time a nigga log on to Twitter, damn, can't afford it. Damn, I don't feel like a man. Damn, I'm not getting no pussy. Like, I think it's just because it's so, it's happening so rapidly, they can't escape it anymore. And so now they're like. The niggas are boiling over. Like, they are boiling over. No, yeah, it's like, you know. Guys starting on OnlyFans, niggas be like shaking like that nigga from Fairly Odd Parents. They be Dinkelberg, but it's just, it's just, it's just, like they just be mad as fuck. Niggas about to pop a a, a boy vessel. Bro, I've had to I've had to ask niggas like like my own niggas like they'll they'll say something about OnlyFans. I'm like, bro, you gotta really ask yourself why are you so concerned with this woman doing her buddy? Why are you so mad that she's getting money? Like, ask yourself those two things. Because if you said that about a nigga, niggas would be calling you a hater. Niggas would be ready to kill you if you was pocket watching on another man, right? So I'm like, ask yourself yeah, why. Is. Ask ask yourself why are you so upset that, that she has OnlyFans? Because you and now you look like money. a straight weirdo. Yeah, like you pocket watching niggas like be you saying like a weirdo. Fuck, fuck, watch, pocket watching this shit. Are you are you gonna say something yeah. that's gonna that's gonna be so? <laughs> Bro, that's gonna be so misogynistic. This is gonna look at you like, what? Like what? That, so that's why you mad. God damn, bro, you are weird as fuck. You out of pocket. Literally, the misogyny just be <laughs> like, okay, out. That's, I what be damn. that's what it really is. Niggas be sick over OnlyFans. I love this shit. I love seeing it. Can we? While we on the subject of OnlyFans, because we we have that. You, you made a you made a, a good point, Raven, about this thing with like niggas knowing that they don't have access to pussy anymore, and yeah. I think that's also on the opposite side of it. You see niggas basically saying like, oh, if you got pussy, you wouldn't need OnlyFans. <laughs> and it's like, that's not the real, that's not what's really going on. You niggas, one, just don't believe that you should pay for, that you should pay for, for, for porn or pay for content. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. This is. This is a super big one for me. Like the whole people being like, why do you need to um, buy a girl OnlyFans? You can see pussy online for free. First of all, if you're watching like Pornhub or you porn like one of them, there's a very high chance that the pussy you're looking at is underage or that's an unconsensual situation. That's dirty as fuck. Um, secondly, even though like, you know, some of the women who are engaging in porn, like, of course, like they're, you know, doing it consensually and of age, like they're getting scammed out of like so much fucking money. The reason you're able to see this free on the internet is because somebody duped them over and didn't give them what they were worth, period. <laughs> So I think niggas are so used to seeing stuff like that for free. And because they think it's, it should be free, I'm a nigga. I deserve to see, you know, like, pussy getting cream pie, like, every day for free. Like, and when a bitch says, uh, no, I don't really feel that way. So I'm going to start an OnlyFans. They start, like, just tweaking, bro. They, like, lose their shit. And what's crazy is that, like, if we want to be honest, if you didn't want to pay for, pay for porn at the place we are in society, you don't have to. Nobody's saying that Pornhub is getting shut down. Nobody is saying any of that shit. It's just bitches who are charging now. But them simply existing is like, it's, like it's, a, anyway. like, it's just a threat to their masculinity. Like and they pay like and that's where that patriarchy come in. It's like, oh, what? You 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 talking about you know, empowerment for yourself? Oh, I can't have it's that shit. Hatred of women, bro. That's it's, what it, that's what it, that's all it is. Like yeah. we masculinity for sure is in it, but what it is is like niggas literally can't on some white shit niggas can't stand to see folks taking their destinies into their own hands people can't seem to people can't stand to see people have power over their own lives niggas love saying self-determination but when a black woman or a black woman sex worker practices self-determination they got every they got every they got every everything excuse to say. in the book <laughs> they got every keyboard to pull out nigga <laughs> like what i want to say mean, I think, go ahead my bad i was just gonna say i think also paying for porn is one of the easiest ways to get into the habit of like paying black women, paying black sex workers, paying fat black people. I think that's one of the easiest ways to get into the habit and the like, you know, yeah, the habit and the tradition of doing that. You know, like, I don't think porn is bad at all. I don't think sex is bad. <laughs> I think all these things are great. I love the erotic, but like, if that's something you're interested in and you claim to be about supporting these groups of people, pay the people to do that on camera for you because they will. And you're supporting someone, and you're also getting, you know, your little nut off. Oh, if you're, if you can, if you identify as as a as as a black radical, a black leftist, and you're not paying for porn, your whole shit is cap. Period. <laughs> Point blank. Your whole shit is cap, bro. Really? A, like your whole, your whole, your whole shit is cap. I'm telling y'all right now, I am on OnlyFans. Period. Point blank. A part of my <laughs> politic is paying for the porn that I consume, nigga. Period. You pay. No, people. yeah, I remember the first. You time pay I people for their labor. Period. Point blank. You pay people for their labor. I watch only. I, I, 
I told bitches at a session that I was subscribed to like this girl OnlyFans, and when I tell you they was looking at me weird as fuck, and I was like, whoa. Y'all don't pay for y'all porn. We was high as fuck. I had to get them to spiel. I was like, whoa. Tell these niggas why. Tell these niggas why they need to pay for porn. Tell these niggas why. No free labor, nigga. (laughs) At all. So especially with this, you know, pandemic COVID-19, right? Um, You know, in Oakland, like, seeing how this is affecting, you know, sex workers, right? Like, OPD was literally had a whole sting operation on sex workers, right? so, yeah, can you describe just a little bit more how you think, you know, COVID-19 is affecting sex workers and, like, what mutual aid and what support is needed for, for sex workers during this pandemic? Yeah, so I think a good starting point for this question would be, if you've seen Hustlers, <laughs> the mess that it was, um, the part where it was after 2008 and you saw the strippers struggling and broke, that's that's what's going on now. <laughs> if the people who pay us don't have money no more, who's going to pay us for services? Who's going to use our services consensually and safely? So what's going to start happening, as much as I don't want it to, is that because people don't have money to pay for things like normally, people are going to start exploiting sex workers more and more. People are going to start you know, um, sexually assaulting them because there's this idea that people like own sex workers' bodies because that's just what we're here for, right? Like, and so more violence. Um, and then, of course, seeing operations like this, there are more women turning to sex work or the women who are in sex work are now no longer like screening or doing all these things because they, at this point they're desperate for cash and they just need the money to survive. And so, like, you know, the police, of course, <laughs> and law enforcement, they're just going to jump on that you know, to put more more people in jail, to criminalize more people, all things like that. And so right now it's it's really rough for a lot of sex workers. A lot of, you know, um escorts have begun to do online sex work. Um, but that's getting that's it was kinda oversaturated before, but now it's really oversaturated and just there's just not enough money going around. And so it's it's making it really hard for people to find a living. Um, but it's also making it just more dangerous because those who are in the game, like, you know, shit is getting real tough and real real right now. Yeah, as if it was safe for safe for sex workers to begin with, you know what I'm saying? Situations like this gonna make it even more unsafe. Every time. And then of course, you know, we talk about how black people are disproportionately being affected by COVID nineteen. Like, but I think of uh, black sex workers, if you were to look like that specific, that's also going to be there, too, because now, you know, this whole social distancing, how do I social distance if the way I get my money is by, like, being in person with clients? Like, what yeah. does that mean? You know, and so you got people who are like, you know what, I can't social distance. I got to put, like, food on the table. Or, you know, like, I don't even want to perpetuate this whole narrative about every sex worker being, like, super poor and broke. Bitches just might want still want nice things. They might want a Chanel bag. But, like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go, like, do my job. And so, yeah, now they have the wrong and shit like that. And then they go see more clients. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where it's just, like, impacted at that level pretty severely. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about here at OPD, we had a, we had a huge scandal where um, yeah, OPD was basically – sexually assaulting uh, underage trafficking yeah tra- with the trafficking and, and sexually assaulting underage um girls and so now i'm thinking about what it's like to even have this hyper visibility of the police out on the street with the shelter in place ticking them motherfuckers knowing that they're not there to protect niggas either that they did to cause the same harm abolish police period facts abolish the concept of police the police themselves abolish the government abolish the state abolish the usa Let's let's get started right now. <laughs> so as we talk about this pandemic and the experience of sex workers during this time, what mutual aid has been offered to you all or, and what mutual aid is needed? Mutual aid been offered to us? That, I'm, I'm not quite sure. As far as I know, nothing. <laughs> I mean, there's um still, you know, all these, like, FOSTA, that, that the, like, there's that so up. <laughs> so I mean like if anything there's still like harm being done against us and then I would say what these sex workers like me I, it's going to be very individual depending on the sex worker but money we're in a capitalistic society where the only time we have access to like resources and shit is money and if you can't give us money but you have a way of giving us those resources give it to us not through like a middleman not through some fancy little organization that makes you feel good but give it to us directly we got cash out in our bio 
We got, you know, Venmo, PayPal, Bitcoin, all of it. Trust me. So I would say, like, start, start paying for porn. I think that's a great way to, like, start, like, putting money in people's pockets during a time like this. So that's the only, like, mutual aid I could think of is just, like, listening to what sex workers want. If you know one in real life, like, personally ask them for it. But, um, yeah, that. So to, to, to ask you again, I guess, from your personal your personal perspective, you know, Blake and myself are, are two men that, you know, say that we adapt a politic that will dismantle patriarchy um, and we want to be allies in solidarity with women. So as two niggas that identify as that, what are some ways that we can show up for, for women and for, and, for, and for sex workers? Uh, I think the two that pop up in my mind immediately is reference us when necessary and protect us without us having to ask you to. I think that it, it gets really, really tiring always have to be the fat black sex worker that has to like, you know, check somebody when they say something that's against fat black sex workers. Like people already don't want to listen to me because of the body that I'm in. But then it's also like, I'm getting tired. I'm getting stressed out. So if, if you're like, you know, um, a cishead man, like, or or if you're anything that's just not a black sex worker, I feel like a real good thing for you to do to hold yourself accountable and to, like, help, like, dismantle, like, these systems is when people do start wilding, you know, you step in the front line and you say something. And then you remind them, niggas, hey, I'm saying this to you. I'm checking you on this. But guess what? Shorty said this before. So that way, you know, motherfuckers don't develop, like, that hero complex that white people do when they start, mm -hmm. like, advocating for people yeah. of color. They'd be, <laughs> they be, like, you know. be like, oh, yeah, you <laughs> yeah. got Tim Wise over here acting like he's the fucking white savior talking for everybody. <laughs> don't even, you know, just, just like in academia, they don't want to throw it back to, like, the person that said it originally. So now it looks like they didn't invent it, this brand new thing, and wow, don't they deserve all the flowers? Like, no. So defend us. Um, without us having to tell you to in public and in private, and then remind it that we've been saying this shit for years. I think that's a perfect segue to go into our our Patreon exclusive content. But before what, what, we do that, yeah. you know, can you plug your socials? Cash App, Venmo, Cash App, Venmo, Only Fans, Only Fans, whatever you got, Bitcoin, whatever. Yeah. You, you, what what our listeners oh, know. I, I don't have an OnlyFans, but if you would like some content of me doing some sexy stuff, just DM me on Twitter at Mother uh, Princess. And then my Venmo and my Cash App are Mother Princess, like a pimp, not princess, so <laughs> Pimpstess. Um, and then, of course, like if, if you just want to have questions or you just want to have dialogue about any of this stuff, my DMs are open for that, too. I don't really do free labor, but I really do enjoy, like, you know, talking about stuff like this. And, you know, I think the best ideas come from simple conversation. Well, we appreciate you for sure. Thank you for fucking with Hella Black. Yes, of course. So to tap into this next part, tapping with our Patreon, patreon.com slash hellblackpod. Pay up, nigga. Pay for the labor. Pay for the learning, nigga. Support Hella Black. Patreon.com slash Hella Black Pod.